Anonymous asks, what are some typical misunderstandings you've seen people have about memes? The main misunderstanding is they think that evolution is a metaphor. They think it's vague hand-waving, or maybe a bit better than that, but they don't see it as like a solid scientific theory. Uh, the exception is with genes. When it comes to genetic evolution, they view it as science. But with memes or any application that isn't just like how animals evolved, um, they kind of view it as crap. Uh, kind of like evolutionary psychology, which actually is uh, hand-waving and telling stories, and it's, it's not in the same category of like real science, like the evolution of the eye in animals in the past. So people see memes a lot like that. In a lot of ways, people see memes as having like even a worse reputation than evolutionary psychology, which, which is fooling far too many people. So the main thing about memes is they involve literal evolution. Anything that can replicate with variation and selection, um, evolution can apply to that. Genes are not the only things that can replicate and be varied and selected. That also works with ideas. And it's pretty easy to see it works with ideas. You can copy ideas. There are variations in the copies and there are selection. People critically think about the ideas and accept some of them and reject others. So evolution takes place, literally. This is hard for people to get because they are unaware that with genetic evolution, the main concepts are replicators, variation, selection. Like they literally don't even know that, that that's what's going on, that genes are replicators. Um, so since they don't understand the basics of genetic evolution, they're unable to take those basics and apply them to mimetic evolution. It's not just amateurs who are like this or like lay people or whatever. People who look like experts who write books um, they also do vague hand-waving and stuff about memes. There's literally only one person who ever took memes seriously, um, recognized, like, that technical views on evolution should be used to apply to memes, and actually developed a, a reasonable, objective, non-hand-wavy theory. And that's David Deutsch and his theory of rational and anti-rational memes as the two replication strategies. And no one else has ever done good work in the field, except the only exception is David Deutsch fans who built on his work. But no one else ever did like original um, getting the ball rolling type of work that was any good. Um, it's only one person and everyone else besides David's fans um, just does bad work in the field, and it's all hand-waving and crap. So that's why memes have such a bad reputation, is all the other like advocates don't know what they're talking about, and they don't treat it like a, a rigorous science, which they should. Like, We know quite a bit about evolution in a technical, detailed kind of way, and that should be used when thinking about memes, but people don't. They treat memes a lot more like psychology, where... Uh, standards are very low and people tell stories about human personalities or whatever and it's vague and kind of crappy. It's not useless. Like, you can tell psychological stories about what people are like to try to understand people and, and get some value out of that and maybe help some people. But that's a different kind of thing than like a scientific approach. So the basic problem is people put memes in the hand-waving category that maybe has some value rather than viewing it as a science and actually doing scientific investigation. A lot of what's going wrong here is people don't understand the epistemology tie-ins. Like, memes are ideas, and so epistemology is super relevant. Like, we're dealing with in epistemology, how do people learn? How do you deal with ideas? How do you think about ideas? And the, the good epistemology is evolutionary epistemology. And so if people understood that and knew what was going on there, 
memes would make more sense to them because they'd already be thinking about mental processes in terms of evolution in a, a technical way instead of a vague, oh, well, things got better over time kind of way. If you're going to take evolution and apply it to the realm of ideas, memes are not the only thing that should be coming out of that. Understanding how learning works via evolution, via guesses and criticism, and all that popper stuff, should also come out of it. So, people who are totally clueless about popper stuff, you wouldn't expect them to do well with memes either. So, the person asked about misunderstandings of memes, um, which I assume was like a very general interest question, but I'll also talk a bit about people's misunderstandings of static memes, which are the memes that have a replication strategy of disabling people's creativity and preventing criticism, preventing rejecting the idea, as opposed to rational memes, which have a replication strategy of being useful, being out-competing other ideas in uh, people's judging ideas and looking for good ones. And if you want to know more about the types of memes, it's in David Deutsch's book, The Beginning of Infinity. And also, I'll put a link to a blog post of mine in the uh, podcast notes. Anyway, um, a decent number of people have like a, a general idea of static memes um, from Deutsch or myself but there's a lot of misunderstandings about them. The basic thing is people say, oh, well, that makes sense, and then they don't take it seriously. They don't integrate it into their thinking. They don't treat it as like a rigorous idea about what the world is like, and then look at the consequences. They treat it as just like a vague, oh, most people are mostly dumb kind of thing, rather than seeing that it means very directly that they are puppets of memes in major ways in their life. It affects them. It's an urgent problem for them. They have a serious lack of control over their lives. A lot of their lives are being determined by static memes, not by their own choices. And if you would acknowledge that and, and you realize that's the situation, then you should start researching it, like actually learn more about this, try to understand it really well which means learning pop or learning evolution, etc. Because um, you need to understand it so you can know how can I detect this? How can I defend against it? What can be done about it? How do you limit the role of memes in my life, static memes, um, and get more control over your own life? So that's like an urgent problem. You know, how can I control my life instead of being controlled? Um, and people just don't seem to take it seriously or worry about it. They seem to have vague intuitions that nothing's too bad, their life isn't a disaster, nothing's going too wrong, they're mostly doing what they want to do, they're making their own choices, they're not a puppet. And vague intuitions are exactly the kind of thing that static memes are good at controlling, influencing, manipulating, etc. Anywhere that it's like pretty easy to be biased is just the kind of place that's easier for the memes to be in charge of. So relying on vague intuition for this kind of issue is, is really wrongheaded, like worse than usual. Because it's basically like saying, well, the memes told me I don't have a meme problem. That's what consulting your vague intuition means. This one thing ought to be enough to motivate people to actually be scholars to try to learn ideas seriously and, and to focus a lot of attention on that because without it, like your life is in a lot of ways a waste and you're just going through a script you didn't write and you don't know why you're doing it and, and it lies to you about what's going on and it's like you're blinded to reality and you're going through sort of a fake world where you don't make many of your own choices and you don't understand what situation you're in. And that's an awful thing. It's kind of like Plato's cave. And if you got some knowledge that maybe you're in that situation, 
even just maybe, even just like 10%, that's worth investigating more. Like you should care about that, not just accept it or be willing to take the risk. Um, but people don't want to learn and think and criticize and so on and study. And partly they don't know how, but they, they mostly get stuck at the beginning with the not really doing much kind of thing. Like there's not much energy when people try and get stuck. But that's another topic.